Good evening everyone, time for another Bitcoin report. This is the three minute chart of Bitcoin provided by BitcoinWisdom.com. Now we had a very exciting today in Bitcoin and especially in the alt coins as well. The trading was crazy on BTC-E. I pretty much spent my entire day today trading and uh, it was a wild ride. You can see right now we are just edging up above resistance here at about 1117. So it looks like we're still rising. Now I posted a chart on the Bitcoin channel. Let me pull that up here. Posted a chart on the blog at what I thought was the bottom and uh, it was a very rapid sell-off there was a, a long lag this is the chart here there's a couple of things that I put on this chart that were indicators to me at this time and I posted this as soon as I had it the two things are the crossover of the moving average right there and this little spike which was a penetration of this downtrend line so that for me was a confirmation that the bottom had been put in now if we go back and look at the chart you can see we're talking about this time frame right here and the price of Bitcoin was about 970 you can see that we've now run past 1100 so I think it was a pretty good call now if we pull back farther out we can see clearly that this correction fits in perfectly with the support that I was talking about at 900. I was calling for a correction back to 900. We actually went through that. We went down to 850. And actually, I think the very bottom was around 840. And then we bounced very, very hard. That is not uncommon at all that is has happened in the past you can see that the volume spike that we got was higher than these past ones that doesn't mean that we can't come back down and correct again but I think the bottom is in for this move you can see we had a spike bottom there but we actually went lower before we finally rallied so a very wild ride you can also see that the MACD down here is approaching a crossover point you can see that when the MACD crossed over the last time, uh, that was a beginning of a big run. So I think the bottom is in. We'll have to wait and see. Now, the action on BTC-E was absolutely crazy as well. I don't know if you can see it, but if you look right behind here, that's the volume coming in. All the volume was dwarfed. We saw this on all the currencies. You can see in the Russian ruble, an enormous volume spike. Bitcoin in Euro, another huge volume spike. Now, the Litecoin is selling off, but you have to remember it, it actually bounced after that, but it's not uncommon to see the alts sell off a little bit in terms of Bitcoin when Bitcoin rallies that strongly, because remember when you're in an altcoin and it's gaining on Bitcoin and Bitcoin's gaining, you're making a double win. So it's very difficult to be in a coin that is rising rapidly as Bitcoin is rising as well. Of course, those are the big winners that you look for. I covered a couple of those, Feathercoin and Frycoin, and uh, Feathercoin is up significantly from when I covered it. Let's look at Litecoin versus the US dollar. So you can see when it's quoted in terms of US dollars it's quite a bit stronger and then there's Litecoin now quoted in the Russian ruble and in the euro name coin is not that strong again because of its quoting in, in Bitcoin name coin against the US dollar is fairly strong really don't do a lot of following of the Nova coin I think it's Nova coin don't really watch that one 
TRC is one that I had recommended. Now you can see strength coming back into it. It's very strong. You can see also that huge volume spike that came in. It actually touched down to 98, but it's had a tremendous run. I bought into it at about 50 cents, sold out at about uh, buck 59, and didn't get back in. Unfortunately, I should have got back in right here. PPC has had an incredible run. If you were trading it, again, there's the volume. If you were trading it on Friday when BTC-E introduced the PPC US dollar cross, it was insane how fast this thing went. It ran all the way up to $8 or something. I don't remember, from maybe a dollar. So that was a crazy run. Feather coin, that's one that I've recommended. It's holding its own. And then XPM, that's another... Uh, smaller one but you can see huge volume coming in on that as well now let's go over to the market cap of the coins and I want to talk a little about quark coin now I was going to do a video on fake cryptos and I don't know if this is one or not I have my suspicion, so people help me out who know a lot more about it than I do. Uh, if this is truly a peer-to-peer -peer currency, one thing that really made me wonder about it, and again, I haven't had the time to investigate, was with Bill Still coming out and recommending it. Bill, Skill, Bill Still is a notorious Bitcoin basher. I did exposés of him when he was bashing the Bitcoin. Of course, he was repeating all the ridiculous arguments. Uh, he may have changed his tune. Uh, there's some people who are due an apology if he has. But be that as it may, the thing that gives me pause with this Quark coin here, first of all, is you can see that it is fourth in market cap. We've been following the market cap. You can see Bitcoin's up there at $12.5 billion. Litecoin is almost at a billion dollar market cap and then pure coin is down here but we've got quark coin right there in fourth place and it's edging out name coin which has been around for quite a while um, feather coin prime coin fray coin a lot of these coins have been around terra coin a lot of these coins have been around for a long time and yet they don't have a fraction of quark coin now the other thing that's very suspicious about that is when we go to crypto coin charts and you can see how much it's grown all the crosses that we have it's it's crazy but if you look here to find quark coin you can see that it's not quoted on the two major exchanges that I use now that doesn't mean anything but it's a little bit suspicious how does all that money get into it it is quoted on Cripsy which is not one that I use that really doesn't have a lot of volume is nothing compared to BC, BTC E and I like uh, Vercurex but it may be up and coming so I may be wrong but if we look at the number of BTC here we've got about 1100 BTC so let's go back and look at a comparable coin such as pure coin well, let's look at Namecoin because Namecoin's been around quite a while. So you can see the market cap of Namecoin and Quarkcoin are very, very close to each other. So let's go back and take a look at Namecoin. And you can see Namecoin is on all these exchanges, BTC-E, Cripsy, but the vast bulk of the trading is done on BTC-E. And look at there, there's... 3700 volume on the name coin so why is it that without being traded on what I consider the two major exchanges just being traded on this Cripsy and only having a volume of less than a third of name coin it has reached a market cap of name coin and actually surpassed it so here's the chart you can see the market cap has absolutely exploded from approximately 
$150,000 or so, about $100,000, $125,000 on November 23rd, and now the market cap is $64 million. So that gives one pause. How did all of that money get into QuarkCoin? I don't know the answer to that question. So until I have a chance to investigate it, I'm going to rely on you to let me know if uh, this really is a true peer-to-peer -peer cryptocurrency. And if not, of course, the market is going to vote against it. Uh, but it's something that we need to be on guard for. They're obviously losing the battle against cryptocurrencies. They can't win this battle, but they can have some type of rear guard action and bring in coins that they can control. I don't know if that's the case with Quark coin, but it very well could be. So back to the chart, again, a very wild ride. If we look at things in the long term, this is just a normal correction. You can see that our correction that we had back to that old top at the 350 level. And even before that, we had that correction back to 270. So this looks normal in the course of things. If this is a normal correction and not the beginning of a bear market, then we would expect this parabolic rise to continue and we probably will rapidly move towards that $3,000 target that I've been talking about. And we'll talk to you next time.